and we're live. Hello everyone, this is Malfunction from New Zealand. Beautiful Whangarei here. It's a bit rainy today. It's gonna to be raining every day this week, almost. Uh, gray clouds, um, it's been raining all night. Uh, today with me, I have got um, Andrew Demas from Florida, from New York originally, but now from Florida. So um, he's been working on, a, um, has worked on a, uh, a comic strip called um, My Pet Ninja, which is on 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 the uh, Rising Sun Comics website. You can check it out there on risingsuncomics.com. Uh, Andrew Demas is uh, is a co-artist as well, but he's going to tell you about what he's been doing, has been doing with uh, My Pet Ninja. Um, take it away, Andrew. Yeah. Yes. Well, I've been working on this comic for a while. We got, I think, about what I believe, sixteen, seventeen, uh, ready to go. Um, I'm the colorist, pencilist, the inkist, well, the inker, I should say. Um, and yeah, and I help with the writing as well. Um, it's a lot of fun to put a comic together, especially a strip, you know, like this, the Sunday funnies. I've always enjoyed the Sunday comics. So we set it up in that formula. So, you know, get to point A to point B quick, quick punchline. And we think it's just a sweet, fun comic that we worked on. So we have a lot of fun. How long... Um... Like, how did the um, idea come about for this? Well, we came across a writer who had an idea, and uh, he talked to Hawk, uh, our founder of, of Rise and Sun. Um, and then he came to me because they said my art style would fit this. And then I read it, and I liked it. And then I, I drew a couple of you know character designs and so forth. Um, and the writer loved it. And, of course, Hawk loved it. So they put me together with the writer, and, you know, that's it. We just started working out panels it's, it was really simple but enjoyable when did you guys start this project uh, we started this actually kind of like a, like a few years ago um we, we we recently took a break because we all have our own things going on but uh we were in talk of you know bringing it back and doing more panels because uh, we want to put it in a book form uh, mm. so so w i'm coming back so we're definitely gonna do more so there's about, um you guys had like um three um people working on this. Who are the other three? Uh, another one was, uh, the writer was Ryan Daly. And then I had a letterist. Um, his name was Jason Long. Uh, he helped put the lettering when I, I would ship it to him. And I worked real close with the uh, writer. Um, we would always go back and forth, you know, switch up punchlines here and there, see what stuck, you know, what didn't, you know. And so it was us three working on it. And it was a lot of fun. The thing about this um, comic is that I actually liked it because it was fun. And it's an all ages uh, comic, um, you know, 16, uh, it's like, a, like you said, it's a Sunday Funnies thing. Um, yeah. How many panels are in this? They're usually uh, six. I think there was one comic strip we did that might have been nine, um, but I don't think that one was released yet. But we mostly stick with the standard of six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's quite different to, um, say, like a normal uh, comic strip where there's about three across, three panels across. Uh, or four panels across, and you guys went for six, like a box uh, setting. Uh, why was that? Is there a reason behind that, or there wasn't much of a reason? Um, first, we we try to keep it like old fashioned, most likely. Actually, if you look at the old old comic strips in the Sundays, like they kept them simple. But we also I looked up more comic strips. Like some would break out of the box, or some will have no box at all and just use the mm -hmm. environment to form either the square or rectangle, which whichever shape we had to make it more vertical, horizontal. So we yep. just we just kept playing with the shapes pretty much until we got what we wanted. And we felt like taking away some of the squares actually helped the story. Like if some of the panels you'll see, like they're popping out of the panels, which is pretty cool. And, and like, like it's like it's being loud and to attract your attention better. So it was like trying to keep it like old school, but we also mm. want to go more new school. You know, we're trying yep. to go back and forth. It kind of reminded me of like uh, of the Tintin style of uh, artwork, and um, you know, like uh, you're looking at yeah. artwork here that's like nice and colorful and poppy, and it's not sort of uh, you know serious style. I mean, not so serious. And not trying to demean that, but like serious in the sense of like they're so detailed. You know, so you yeah. kind of make it like um, it's it. It feels like uh, it's something that you just pick up and go here, son. Or daughter, yeah, we, you know? we wanted to keep it like kind of like a, a child's innocence because it's about a child who has, you know, mm. this 
little bodyguard is my pet ninja who helps yep. in your life. And you know, he's just a kid. So we kept the bright colors. You know, we don't want to be too dark tones because the more dark you use, you know, it, it brings down, you know, the positive energy. So more vibrant colors, it's more positive, more outspoken. So that's why I chose to keep it with a more colorful pieces. Like, right, cause there's one, one comic strip where he deals with somewhat of a bully, but you know, I don't want to use dark. I don't want it to be really grim, but like mm. still colorful cause there's a happy ending at the end. So I wanted to keep that going. So, yeah. Well, it's quite quirky, uh, and I think that's that, that's a charm of it that I found. It's like, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, an over the top uh, situations that the, uh, the ninja places himself in because, well, you know, he's there to protect this child. Tell us mm -hmm. a bit about that um, that relationship. How did that um, story come about? Well, that was again from the writer. Like he goes, um, "What if well, at first we thought, what if he was, you know." his imagination you know like what if it was just his imagination helping him get through because he he's uh he has only a mother we we don't he's you know he's a, that's all he has he doesn't have a father so what if he developed this character but then we went further into the story and go like well what if we just make him real Let, let's let's make him real let's make him really there you know but he keeps hidden away from the parents so you know doesn't freak out the parent so i i actually like the idea of having him someone real um, to me, just like, you know, authentic friendship that, that mm. he could have with this character. Like it's his bodyguard, his best bud. Cause you know, all through life, people have that one person who will always stick up for you. So that's what I really right. wanted. So I like, so I was like, Ryan, let's, let's make him real. Let, let's, let's mm. do that. So, and we're like, okay, let's make him real. So, so well, yeah. The thing is, um, having someone who's real, um, and someone who's not real is that you can actually physically affect the world around you. Whereas if yes. you have an imaginary friend, you know, like a fairy or a, you know, uh, whatever animal, whatever situation. Uh, whereas in this one, he's physical and he's affecting the world around it. Is that, what was, the, you know, was it part of the reason that you, he could actually affect the world around his, this child? Well, again, we wanted to make it that, uh, when I, I would on him affect it because I, uh, I want to try to make him as real as I could. So I figure like if w whatever you do, whatever action you do in life, you know, there's always a consequence or whatnot. So that's why I wanted to make sure I can make it as real as I could. So I figured let's, let's have him do these things. Let's have him act, react to situations, you know, and then, you know, the kid will follow and then, you know, it's his best bud and his bodyguard. So let's see what, what we can do. And so we just started cranking out different stories. I'm like, okay, let's, Let's, let's up it again. So we just kept going and going. So, I mean, it's it's a lot of fun, and um, uh, I still enjoy the My Pet Ninja uh, to this day. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like if you're doing anything, if you do, um, if you don't enjoy it, it's going to come out in your work, you know. Yeah. And uh, you always, you know, it's it, it, the work. No matter how much you think, you know, if there's no passion behind it, it will show. Uh, one thing I do like about it is like we talk about colors and stuff. Tell us about. Um, the way you um, decide what stories you're going to write. Well, we try to stay in the month of what's going on in that month. Should we go for the holiday, the summer? Should we do a summer vacation? So each month we try to hit. So obviously the holidays, Christmas, like, you know, we try to hit the big holidays, but obviously we don't want to constantly do it. So obviously if we do another winter break, maybe we do something about getting out of school, you know? So we, we try to keep like key ingredients of what's going on in that month that people can relate to. So like a Thanksgiving yeah. dinner, um, of course, like I said, spring break, uh, people do spring cleaning, you know? Mm. So I, I wanted to keep it like the events, like, oh, I can relate to that event. So help right. the reader to get into it more. The other thing is that, um, I mean, it's, it's such a universal sort of uh, comic story, even though like it might, it's set in America and stuff and you're talking about spring break, we don't, around the rest of the world, we don't know what that is, oh. right? We just- Oh God. Well, this I, did, I didn't holiday. do my homework on that one. <laughs> yeah, but the thing, but the thing there is that it's it doesn't matter because we know enough about America for movies and what you know whatever um, that we not, we understand that that's the time people go on a break, a long time. But it's universal time, so it's like everybody's going for holiday, and even I mean everybody here, even in New Zealand, will have a spring cleaning set up for the winter or for summer. Right. You know, dust out the cobwebs. Um, tell me. Um, how do you go about, um, um, like we talked about how you chose the stories, but how do you go about setting up 
the characters itself, like, I mean, the different characters. I mean, we know he's going to school and stuff as a young child, but how do you introduce characters into it or new characters that are already, you know, Right. Now, um, what we do is, like when, like I said, what I work with Ryan Daly, and um, we go back and forth, and we actually go through our past. Like, what have we experienced to put in this story? Like, you know, a lot of people experience bullies, so we both will discuss, well, how would he handle the bully, you know, what, what not, and, okay, what kind of character? So, you know, what? how do we want the bully to look? So I'm like, well, we try to go back and forth, like, you know, oh, um, I remember one guy looking like this, you know, I remember one, so we'll, like, mix and match. That's how we'll get a lot okay. of our characters. So a lot of it is pretty much from our past experiences. Um, and I think that's great to have because putting that in, like I said, it feels like it's more, there's more life to it. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, so then I'll just crank out like, okay, so mom, I like the old fashioned looks. I gave her the, the long skirt, you know, long hair. If you look at it, like it's kind of retro because it curls mm -hmm. at the bottom. Like I, I, I like the, 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 you know, the, the strong empowerment woman, you know, like back mm -hmm. in like the forties and fifties. So. I kept that style going with that. So yeah, so even little hints in there is like what we experience or what we love from our childhood or you know yeah. whatever like his like I liked history, so that's why the the old like generation of women I use. So I, it's it's stuff that we enjoy that we try to put yeah. in there is pretty much what happens. Yeah. Now you mentioned Saturday morning cartoons, so I'm gonna um, you know we've got stuff like um, let me see um, you know from. From my childhood, basically, uh, you know, you got, who is this? Um, Herji, the uh, creator of Tintin and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. And this is what, what I like about um, having um, your guys work in Rising Sun Comics uh, with my pet ninja is that, you know, you've got nice, you know, this is from, you know, this is from Herji himself. Yeah. Or Herj, and you look at it's the artwork and it's kind of like a, it feels like a homage, you know, and that's a great thing about it is that it's like uh, not many people do that anymore, uh, where the artwork sort of uh, the happiness, the joy, you know, the colorful uh, times of the childhood stuff. And I think this is what really got me about this, um, um, this, you know, uh, strip because it was like, oh, this is fun, you know. Yeah. Tell me about... Um, yourself you know who you are and because we don't introduce you properly at the start okay. you know okay yeah, how, did you get, how did you get into comic books and stuff and so we'll go we'll spend the next few moments talking about um your background your art background your you know lettering um and you know we talked about writing this stuff but tell us about uh andrew okay well ever since i was a little kid i, I loved to draw like I, and color and coloring books you know i was that kid you know like uh when I, my first thing I would draw, I remember it was a penguin. I drew a penguin. That was the first thing I ever draw or ever drew. But um, over time, I just felt like you know, it just it was relaxing to draw. It wasn't. It's, it's and of course it's fun, but I, I found yeah. it relaxing and it's a great way to express yourself. So I just kept going at going at. And eventually, I went to school for it. I went to Ringling College Art and Design. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went there. You know got a better strong foundation of, of what to do, like, you know, how to do it. And the school really did help. Um, so that was nice. And then after that, like, you know, trying to find out where to put it. I did a lot. Of free, I still do a little freelance work here and there. Like I do commissions and all that. But um, the comics, are, it's, it's always been there. I was, when I was a little kid, I would read my, fir my first, my big comic was Batman. I, I love Batman. So, you know, Batman was what got me into the comics, and I still have my Batman comics to this day of what I had. And, you know, after that, you know, I branch out to other heroes. But, yeah, um, there was art. It just, it feels like my, the reason I got into art, too, is, like, if you look around the world, like, everything is art. If you really look at everything, and and I guess that's how I see everything in the world. Like, I, I see the world as art and everything, even, like, the, the design of it. Someone had to design your chair, you know. There was a yeah. designer there. like. Exactly. So there's an artist in everything. So I realized like the artist is really is true is truly the backbone to practically everything, you know. Well, so I mean, that's why I want to get into that. To the caveman, right? Yeah. That's the reason we know that they were around or were you know there is because they were drawing all these mammoths with and people with spears, stick yeah. figures. Otherwise, uh, and you raise a good point. A lot of times people don't realize how important art is to society. Um, I think it was about a year and a half ago at a uh, event here uh, for uh, fun, um, kind of like a, for our community at um, Creative Northland where, you know, an elderly gentleman who's uh, like a uh, make, um, 
patron of the arts here stood up and said, people don't realize how everything is art. Yeah. That there's so much, there's like you said, like the chair I'm sitting on, the pen, I'm looking at your glasses, my glasses, yeah. designed by someone, mm -hmm. you know. And so even little tiny sketches on those, um, you know, on 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 the caves, yeah. that's how we know we're there. And that's even right. the, you know, the the whole um, um, temples and stuff that are still around these days, thousands of years later, designed yeah. by an artist. But yeah, so um, so you went to school uh, to mm -hmm. learn how to do this. And uh, how long were you there? Four years. It was a four-year school. Uh, it was okay. in uh, Sarasota, Florida. Uh, it's a really nice school. I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, like they, the, the faculty was amazing. They, they, they taught me everything. They helped give me a better structure. Like they saw, like I was, you know, I was into it. So like, okay, just, like, just this is what you got to do. You know, like so. There's a lot of times like I did stuff like I didn't even think of doing that they told me to do. You know, they're like, one, one of my artists, I mean, well, my instructors was like. Break down your shapes. Draw something with just simple shapes. Like, mm -hmm. Put something together with simple shapes and just build it. And then see what you get. Like, like make a face on it. You don't know. You see what you get. And I'm like, wow, okay. And, I, and I've done that in, with a, a numerous objects, you know, even with a simple uh, box of tissue. Like, you know, just give it character, like give it, give it a feature. Like, yeah. it really does help to just break everything down. And, mm -hmm. and he was just like, everything's a shape. I want you to remember that. Everything's a shape. And I'm like, and like see, hearing that, like, of course you think, well, duh, that's what it is. But like, when you really yeah. look at like, you know, fingers, how like the point, like more of like an oval, like, you know, like it, and then it connects into like a rectangle. Like, it's just like, wow, okay. I think, okay, this is, this is helping. It, it's, it's it, and it helped a lot. So, and the same thing with painting. Like they would say like, layer your painting as a, you know, when you do traditional, layer it as a cake, you go in dark to lights. So just put the layers on it and eventually you'll see the form. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I, it was like, it's like, it's like, it started to click more, you know, cause I would use, when I was first started painting, I just threw it on there and just prayed it would work. You know, I'm like, yes, I think that's right. But he's like, no, think of it as, you know, you're building a cake. And like, they just simplified everything for you and it just helped it just click better. And it was just from that, I was just like blown away. Like how, what they taught me. I this felt like they had Mr. Miyagi as a teacher. <laughs> yes, and, and it's, it's it's that's the thing that people um, people don't understand. And I, I I mean I've I've spent like probably about a fair amount of my time in uh, tertiary education, uh, learning all the skills. And you know you don't realize when it comes into play until you're sitting there going, um, yeah, the eye doesn't look right. Yeah, you know uh, that especially when you're doing um, you know a cartooning type comic strips. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, slight expressions that have to be, you know, set up the right way. Yeah. You know, and um, if you're just looking and going, oh, it's just a simple drawing, but you don't realize that someone's been there going, oh, it's not doing well. That doesn't look right. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm gonna have to redraw <laughs> that expression. Do you find that happening yeah. with, you know, when you when you're doing this? Oh yeah, like you there. What again? What one structure told me is like if you have problems. You have a face, grab a mirror, make the expression yourself, see how it right. works. And remember, it's animation, it's cartooning, like, you know, exaggerate it. You know, if, if he's making a scary, scared look, like, make the eyes really wide, you know, like, really have it pop. It's because it shows more expression. Because you got to tell a story, you got to show motion animation in a still picture. So you got to add as much, you know, expression, exaggeration you can in order for it to work. Like, I mean, even one scene where I had him, like, he had ants. I, I don't know how far you guys got, but I got, he had the ninja put ants in his pants and help him run faster in a race. So yeah. I had him just off the ground and just yeah, that was a, That's a fun read. That one. You, know, you wouldn't you know, think that, to do, you know, a ninja would yeah. do that to a child. Yeah. But, but he thought this is yeah. a great idea. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, keeping his feet on the floor, looking like he's running, like, it, it, the motion would look stiff. It won't look right. So you have to make that judgment. Like, okay, well. I'll make it look like he's flying through the air. So both legs off, put the shadow underneath and smoke like in the old Roadrunner cartoons, you know, Wiley Coyote yeah. Bowie and Roadrunner. So I'm like, that would be perfect. And so that's how it worked. So, I mean, you gotta realize to learn, take the, what you learn from nature and life and be able to exaggerate to a point where it still makes sense on paper, if yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had one of our, uh... One of our, uh, one of my artists, um, 
who's working on Red Dot, and he was talking about his his tutor saying to him, "Why are you trying to do it realistic? Yeah, you know why are you trying to do it realistic? It's it's not going to work. You know why are you trying to? You're having so much trouble <laughs> trying to realistic. Just yeah. go with it. Just just right. make it a, like I said exaggerated." And his work now is like that. It's just so, um, uh, you know, it's very yeah. fun. And, you know, even though it's serious stories, they look fun to read and stuff. And look, the artwork's fun. And, uh, you know, the other thing about this is that, like you said, um, um, you, you know, Garfield, Tintin, uh, Hirsch with, um, you know, uh, I mean, the other one, like I was looking, lifting up here, uh, for those who are just joining us, you know, stuff like, um, you know, very... A lot of word wordy stuff, just people standing around. But what I like about it is like, I mean, you've got the artwork and the story there as well. I mean, you said, mentioned that there's a chance of there's been more of this. How many more do you guys do you think you put out? Because I know there's about 16 already done. Yeah. And they're complete stories. That's the thing about this series is that yeah. each panel set, uh, each page is a complete story. So that's 16 stories. You know that's right. been done so how far do you reckon you're gonna go with this well we definitely want to try for uh 30 to 35 because then that means we could fill a full book and mm. then once we fill the book and then you know see how it sells and if it sells well you know mm. i am definitely down for making more i mean like i said it's really fun to do and it's fun to play back and forth um mm. with the writer and um just having fun with the uh illustration itself it's just again like you know it's going to school for it. Um, I didn't expect I'd be doing a comic strip, you know, for a web series, you know, and, but, it, but it's fun, you know. This, now, um, talking about stories, now, the guy from, uh, I think it was Justin Roiland, um, co-creator of Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. And they've got a new series come out through Hulu called um, uh, Something Orbit. If I remember right, uh, but it's one of the things I notice about it is the the same story is being redone, right? Right, like it's uh, and um, I was watching it and I was going, the the plot seems very similar to other stuff that's done. So how do you stay original? Because I know that like you know you, you you've got your uh, a little boy with a pet ninja and. You know that's just uh, that's your whole um, premise, but how do you stay original to you know trying to come up with new stories all the time? To to be honest, it's actually it's kind of difficult because you know in this day and age, like like a lot of things have been done already. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there, and you know you don't want to you know you know, you know obviously I don't want to like take from somebody else, and that's not my story. It's not original. So then, which we, we try our best to like tweak it like to our own personal stuff. So that's why it's it feels more original because okay he he had the idea of like having a pet ninja help him through life, okay mm. great, now that seems original I like it we'll make him real, I'm like well how can we make this more real, well let's use stories like like stuff that we uh, went through or we had trouble with mm. like I had trouble like uh, I was slow that's that was that's another thing with the whole running one yeah like I was slow I'm like I wish I was fast and then you know I remember the old saying you know like um, I had trouble sitting still. So my, my, yeah. my late grandma would say, well, you got ants in your pants. So, you know, um, we would put that two yeah. and two together. And like, well, that, that, I'll that probably get them going. That's a universal <laughs> saying, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, so. we, everybody's grandma or mom or dad is going to say, you're so agitated. You got ants yeah. in your pants. And exactly. so it's very relatable. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like I said, we, we keep staying with what we, we went through as, as in our past in order for us to connect better and write a story. So it could be more original instead of thinking, oh, that's just like, oh, this is like the story over here, you know, mm -hmm. just like this guy, you know, I'm like, so we do our best to stay original. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, so, it's yeah. the thing about that, like, it's so, uh, because there's there's nothing new under the sun, you know, mm -hmm. as, as, as the saying goes, um, very old saying, um, that it's trying to come up with a new idea, trying to come up with a new storyline or plot for, you know, yeah. for a specific little thing. You it's so hard and you know especially if you you know like i mean when you've got people like Ergy, you know asterix and all those garfield and all these other things you know and having something that's totally different like having like pet ninja yeah. 
right? Yeah. Who's who, who's ever had a you know had a um, little boy who who didn't want somebody there to help him all the time? Mm -hmm. But but the thing about this one is he's a quirky little ninja. Yes, you he know is. He, he doesn't. He's not the serious little thing um, that you'd see. Um, and one the other thing I liked about it is um, the design of the logo. I'm a designer by myself. I mean myself by myself. I'm a designer, and so um, I appreciate logo design. I mean, mm -hmm. I will work on something for about 30, 40 times before <laughs> I am happy with it. Yeah. So how did you guys arrive? Uh, because we put this out on the, on, as, uh, for this, you know, for the promotion of this yeah. at the logo, because I love the logo so much. How did you come up with the logo? Well, the logo was um, honestly, like I said, 30, 40 times. That's what I was running into. And I went back mm -hmm. to my, my school. I, I listened to one of my instructors who's told me, uh, less is more. Don't overthink it. So as I sat there with the logo, I'm like, okay, okay, so what can I do? Make this simple. So I did pretty much like the silhouette, you know, I just, I was like, okay, you know what? Don't go too much into it. You know, mm -hmm. in the shadows. Okay, this is fine. He said, less is more, this, this is gonna work. Because before I would, I, I would overthink it and I was trying to put too much into it. You know, I mean, there was one logo, I'm trying to remember, like I said, well, I did a logo a long time ago, um, but I had like five, six, no, I think it was eight different logos and I hated mm. all of them until I finally yeah. arrived to that one. I was like, all right, all right, this is this one I like, you know, keep it simple. And then also going back to like stuff I love as a kid, like everyone like knows, members, G.I. Joe, the, the, the Cobra, how it was mm. so simple. Like it was just, it was, like I said, everything breaking down the shapes, like it was rectangles, you know, I'm like, yep. just keep it simple, just break it down. You know, you, you get the point across and, and then that's what I did. and. Put it to Hawk, showed him the logo, showed Ryan Daly the logo, and they're like, "Yeah, I love it. Well, let's use it." I'm like, and I'm like, "Good," because I really don't want to make another one because I made so many. It's just <laughs> well, it, it's it's classic. It's it's yeah. it's very it stands out, and I think it it, uh, it it goes with what it, what the whole story is, and it, mm -hmm. uh, it without even you know without even saying too much, you can straight away see what it's about. You can see the um, the two ninjas there. On each end, uh, you can see the um, the motif of uh, you know um, Asian style of writing. So, is it actually um, Japanese or is it, or is it Chinese? Can't remember if it's somewhere is Japanese. No, Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's is the I mean. is that text actually say my uh, pet ninja or something in that, or is this uh, stylized? Uh, I you know, yes, it is actually. I I had that confirmed with another uh person who was working with us at the time at yep. the uh Rising Sun, like because we want to make it authentic. I didn't want it to be excellent, you know, fake. So yeah, that, that was real. Yeah, and that that's what's really. I mean, I was like, I, I I'm sure that that's what it says. I mean, even though I can't read kanji, I can still go. Yeah, I I think that's probably right. The yeah. other thing I want to note on that is um, it reminded me of uh. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that took off from the Dead Devil, uh, flying across the two uh, skyscrapers, yes, you know, jumping over the skyscrapers, and that sort of the silhouette style. I mean, that's iconic in itself. So mm -hmm. that's what I like about the fact that this is an iconic little um, logo, mm -hmm. and um, you know, logos. Lo like I said, and you've already said as well that nobody, no single designer of a logo, you know. Uses the first one to do unless they're like the yeah. perfect brain. Yeah. They might yeah. say it was. They might lie about it. Yeah. You know, they might hide the truth. But it's never one the I, first one. Yeah, and, I can't um, lie about that. That took <laughs> it took a, a couple of tries, like eight eight tries, like I said, eight maybe nine. But yeah, it it was it was a bit frustrating because I was trying to put too much into it, and I was like, ah, oh, it's too crowded, too much noise. You know, it's it's, it's too loud. It's I just want it simple, straight across, and and then we came across that one, and then. That one stuck. It's awesome, man. I mean, I I, I appreciate good logos and I, I appreciate good design work. Uh, I I, you know, I um, I'm, I'm my eyes always about design. If it's something looks a bit off, I'm like, yeah, they didn't spend enough time on that. <laughs> or they should you know, use a bit more effort on on that. Um. So, tell us a bit more. Um, I about yourself. About is there any other stuff that you've been working on or? You know, um, you said I, you do freelance work. Yeah, I do. Like, I do. Uh, you know, commissions here and there. But I'm actually. Um, I just finished up my own children's book. I'm getting ready to get that out. So it's. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I, I've been working on. So, hopefully, like, I get that out there and put it somewhere. So. 
Okay. That's, that's so, the only I've been working on is that children's book. Yeah. All right. Just tell us about this children's book. So we can talk that talk about that a bit. So I, I wasn't aware that you were working on children's book, but yeah, tell us um, if I can spell this right before we put it on. Here we go. Um, what is it called? It's called The Boy in the Rain Cloud. Okay. What's mm -hmm. it about? I mean, it, apart from the obvious. <laughs> obvious. Well, it's pretty much um, through life, like, when I was growing up, I, I read books like The Giving Tree, you know, children's books. And I look at children's books nowadays, and, and they're great, and, and I love them. Uh, but a lot of them are, are humorous, and you know, you, you, and, you, and you need that in life. But there's stuff in life that, that you know, sadly doesn't get, you know, well, gets ignored. And, and I'm not saying my book is bad, but it's just like, it, it shows you pretty much what happens when uh, a kid goes through depression. So, right. and what, you know, what happens, you know, how they feel. And that's why I, I really like this book that I made because it's something that I think everyone goes through in their life and, mm. and a lot of people can relate to. So that's why I'm yeah. hoping to get this book out soon so everyone can read it and, and see what it's about. So is it just a story or is it artwork inclusive as well? It's a story. It's a story about a boy and then you could see him going through a journey through the pages of mm. him trying to fit in and trying to like be helpful but you know it's not going his way like it yeah. just goes south and he just gets uh consumed by the depression and then he just goes with it so, now yeah. um how big is the book is it like a novel novella or uh, it's like it's just like, it's the uh, basic they say about 32 pages i believe okay. it's just so it's, it's nothing crazy you know it gets you straight to the point um it's just it's a, to me it's a little Heartwarming story. I mean, like I said, it might sound like really sad, but trust me, it's it's doesn't it, it it'll be it'll be okay. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So. Well, there's nobody wants to read a depressing story yeah. without a happy ending, right? Or some sort of some sort of um, uh, closure or uh, redemptive uh, ending. So why not? Uh, what was it? Why um, did you stick with just a, like a story rather than using artwork? Because I mean, being an artist yourself, what was what was the decision in that? Well, the thing is, like, I wanted to finally see if I could tell a story. And I had an amazing editor who I mm. ran by the story to. And she, she said, I think you have something here. Like, this is really good. And I'm like, oh, OK. Um, mm. But I mean, I, I always want to see if I could tell stories, not just stick with the art, see if I can do more. Um, mm. And I think also working on my Pet Ninja also helped. Um, yeah me tell more stories like and, and went back and forth uh with ryan and all that um it helped build more structure for me so i wanted to take shot and just tell my own story so that's that's it so again hopefully i get it out soon yeah. so um are you doing it like um so like on kindle or something like that or is it getting printed print release well, right now well, I'm, tr I'm looking for publishers to get it published i'll probably do it through ryan's son um i don't know i gotta I got to tweak it out. I mean, I want it to be mine in general, but I might go through Amazon. Like I'm still hunting is that's where I'm at right now is, um, mm. I, I might do it because I know we had a children's, uh, we're trying to get a children's section going on uh, yeah. rising sun. Um, but I don't know if my book would fit the, mm. like the colorful style did for my pet ninja. I don't know if they, we want to tackle that. So that's why it yeah. was my own project. So it, it's, mm. it's kind of more personal. So I, so I, I, I went back and forth, you know, with people in Rising Sun that I work with. I'm like, well, I have this book. I may be interested. So I'm like, they're like, well, we'll take a look at it. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know if it's going to be the right thing for Rising Sun, for the children's right. section. I rather, yeah. So I'd rather, like, take the chance myself. So then I'll just get in trouble by myself. <laughs> but it's, right. nothing, it's not a bad book. But it's just, again, like, because um, like, the style is more, it's all pen and ink. It's, there's no color in the, in the book. Yeah. There's, there's spots of color here and there, but it's nothing. It's wait, more so black and there white. is actual artwork in this? Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, there is artwork. Oh, yeah, this is what I was going. I was like, wait, oh, wait. Okay. How are you going to get across to kids to oh, read this if there's only just words on this damn <laughs> no, thing no, and no, you're no. an there's, artist? I did, I did spot <laughs> illustration. I thought you meant like, you know, trying to, you know, transcend to the just stories instead of just art, yeah. but no. Yeah, no, I did like spot type illustrations in this book to help yeah. for it. Yeah, and to me, it works because I putting in like the style I did for my pet ninja, it's not going to yeah. work for this book. So, yeah. 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 I mean, the other thing is, I mean, uh, my head's going like, okay, so 
you're telling kind of like a depressing kind of story with the redemptive thing about children. How do you get a child to pick this book up without any sort of uh, drawings in it? You know, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking what I was like as a kid. I'm like, yeah, uh, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> There's no pictures. I'm throwing the book. Yeah, give me, right. give me just... Tintin and Asterix, right? That's all I want to read. Give yeah. me, give me freaking, um, give me uh, Judge Dredd, and I'll Judge be fine. Dredd. You know, but um, yeah, but yeah, that's what I was. I was I'm a bit sorry, no, I misunderstood. I thought you meant just like transcending to, you know, from art to just story. Okay, that's my bad. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Good, good, um, good. Thank you for clar clarifying that because I was like, uh, uh, now, what made you write the story? Um, come up with this um, because I mean, we, you know, you talked about um, children with depression. It's, of course, it's universal. I mean, pa um, kids, kids go through depression, divorce, through bullying, mm -hmm. uh, losing yes. their friends, moving away from home. Uh, like, yeah. I mean, like I remember, um, you know, moving co from another right. country to another country and knowing nobody, you know, yeah. and sort of thinking. That's a scary thought. Uh, yeah. Sure, I didn't know what depression was, but I'm sure I felt it, you know, later yeah. on in life understanding it later so how, how yeah how'd you come come about with this well and uh, well the thing is like i mean because if you like uh watch kids like you know throw tantrums or like have attitudes or like they start to be bad or whatever a lot of times they're not being bad on purpose per se it's more like you know they're they're actually showing signs of depression apparently mm. uh i was talking to one of my friends who who's a child psychologist psychiatrist mm. so like like a lot of tantrums that don't mean you think they're bad kids. You know, there's probably something really wrong. Yeah. You know, and 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 and, and you know, people don't realize that they just think, "Oh, that kid's like no good." I'm like, "Don't say that because you, you don't up. know what the kid's going through. You don't know what he's right. feeling. So, you don't like you said, like moved away or a divorce. Like you don't know what happened to the kid. So I just wanted to address, you know, like what happens, like how, how kids would feel, you know, through mm. the depression, you know. And like this kid that goes through it, you know, like he's trying to be good, do the best he can, but it's just, it's not working. Um, yeah. But so it, to me, it, it's, it's it also, kind of, um, it yeah, kind of, uh, I don't think anybody's tackled it this way in the sense that like, uh, I know the psychologists and all these freaking big books they write about, which hardly anybody reads, but then they'll get on to freaking uh, give a five minute uh, interviews and no, it suddenly sells and then it's like it's just sitting on the bookshelf what i like about it's fact is it's a very short book and it's got artwork in it and you know you can basically you could basically sit there at night with just with your child or with your nephew niece and or grandchild and read it to them read it with right. them as a bedtime story type thing and i think uh not that's the thing um i um i think uh because then you, this is, then you can ask questions right yeah. then you can be with the child Hey, we're going to read this tonight. What do you think of these? Look, there's a picture. This is what I mean about pictures, right? It's right. It, it kind of, it kind of um, has this real uh, connection between the child and the adult when there's a picture there, because the adults looking at the words and going, "Yeah, I understand this, all right," and the kids going, "I don't get this." Yeah, right, right. right. And so <laughs> the connection there kind of um, helps, and I think it's a short, short book. It's got pictures, but I think that the whole idea that this you can sit down with your child and go, all right, we're going to read this tonight, uh, and you know, let me know what you think. What you think? Of, of, yeah, and it's it's a it's a really I think it'll be a really good tool to communicate um, yeah. how to help children get through depression. I mean, uh, the reason I talk about it is because I was a very troubled kid when I was a kid, yeah. um, and had like I said, went uh, we had divorced, we had um, moving to another country, mm -hmm. uh, losing friends, the whole shebang. You could. You know, it's like the tick, 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 tick. Yeah. And then it was like, I was just acting up. And and you don't realize, and you think you're acting up anyway, because you think, yeah, yeah you know, I'm acting up. I'm a trouble kid. But later on in life, you go, yeah. yeah, there was all this shit that was happening that I didn't know was happening. I didn't understand. And I'm supposed to understand, but I'm only 12 years old or 10 yeah. years old. And that's the problem too. Like the kids don't know what depression is. And like, you, mm. and it's, it's, it's not fair to them because, you know, Again, the adults see the kid acting out in public, and I'm like, again, you don't you, you don't know what what's going on in that kid's head. You don't know what's wrong. Yeah. So just relax. <laughs> and also, like the book, I made sure to read it. Well, when I wrote it, like even the adults could enjoy it and understand it, and yeah. most likely can relate as well. So mm -hmm. it, it's 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 written in children's book form, but it can be set for pretty much anybody who wants to read it. 
Yeah. So, yeah. The other thing is, um, I had a good thought there. I just lost it. <laughs> it happens to me <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me get back to it. No, it's gone. It had to do, yeah. Oh, mental health. Yes. Right? So we're very aware of adult mental health. Mm -hmm. We're very aware of teenage mental health. We put out all this money, like especially here in New Zealand, we do the whole thing. We would, you know, a lot of money goes into the mental health now because everybody is, the buzzword is mental health for the last yeah. two, three years in New yeah. Zealand. And I mean, I've had my own issues with that. And so I understand it fully well. And even when we went into this pandemic, especially with lockdown, my concern was the mental health of people. Yeah. I was more concerned about that than I was concerned about the pandemic because I knew how, uh, especially artists, uh, because I am one, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, deal with things like that because we need to be in a very, very special space in our heads to be able to be creative. And uh, it's different to just going to going, um, you know, number crunching and, you know, just doing stacking shelves and whatever. And there's no, um, there's no, um, not downplaying the importance of all that. But the fact is that um, even when I was doing that myself, my brain was somewhere going, yeah, if I write that story that way creatively. So, but when it comes to art and stuff, your, your, your whole system is in tune and your brain's got to be in the right special place. So right. one thing um, I was very aware of is like all my artist friends. Mm -hmm. You know, and I started doing this podcast, oh, like whatever this is, live streaming to talk to this friend, those people, you know, and um, say, hey, I understand that this is going to be difficult. And this is the thing. Adults understand depression really well now because of all the, like I said, the buzzword about it and that because we know about these things, but we don't uh, think about children's depression and children's, yeah. children's, children's uh, mental health, right? The kids' mental health. And we don't talk about it enough. And I think it's good that you're fo focusing on that. And I, and I don't, to be honest, like I said earlier, that there's only textbooks on this shit. Yeah. You know, there's no, let's talk about this sitting next to each other, reading at a bedtime kind of situation. Or even, and the other thing is, you know, uh, it's a perfect book for libraries and schools, right? right. Um, because, you know, you chuck it on a hardcover, you know, it, you, it's on the shelf and you know basically you can read it the teacher can read it in class it's not a big huge book um but the other thing is i mean what's the age group you're looking at with this my, my uh age group i'm thinking about like you know somewhere between like no seven and ten somewhere around there right because I, I i wrote it simple um but it's it's very metaphorical so you know um, but that's my age group I was hitting at. But again, like I said, like even the adults can enjoy it and, and understand what's going on. I mean, I hope they do. It's a children's book. But, you know, it's yeah. um, I want it to be somewhat in the young area because, again, a lot of the kids going through all these tantrums and all that, and they don't even know, like, maybe this would, would help, you know, hopefully, hopefully, when it gets yeah. out. So we'll see. Well, I, th I think it's important. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, like I said, people – People don't tend to um, the whole acting up and dismissive of children's um, behavior, uh, and I think um, you know the other thing is uh, when people think that kids are getting a, a t seeking attention. Yes, they are, <laughs> right? But that they but the attention they're getting is the wrong attention. And right. I think um, you know um, having some something like this, you basically realize okay, the reason. Maybe there's, like you said, there's more to every uh, action. There's, you know, um, the, people don't just react to things without a reason uh, in any given situation. And I think this is a really good idea, and uh, I'm I'm glad you're doing it. And hopefully, you know, we can work. Uh, you can work out with someone how to get this published and out there. Um, is apart from this book, is there anything else you've been working on? Um, just just still just like spot illustrations freelance stuff that's all i've been doing really um just just can't keep the art going so it doesn't die you know that's yeah. all i've been doing so yeah and especially during these times you know i have to i have the time now to keep doing more <laughs> right so in florida so, are you guys still in lockdown in florida or it's uh interesting here in florida um i don't uh, people have uh people don't really follow the rules that well so <laughs> so yeah People are, uh, what, is, what, is, what is that old saying? Uh, move to your own beat, per se, or swing to your own music. But yeah, so that's, uh, 
that's what people down here are doing. Like I know they're they're opening stuff up, so people are going like the mall is back open. So they, yeah. they call it phase one. So yeah. and then so stuff is open and like you know restaurants can be only like a twenty five percent capacity as yeah. right now. So I mean, yeah, they're slowly opening up. Um, good or bad, mm. I don't know. Uh, but to me, like I don't know if I would want to go out. I mean, I might want to yeah. buckle down just a little bit more. Just, just saying, but you never know, yeah. because this thing has hit people, and it it affects people differently. I mean, some people yeah. say, "Oh, I just had a fever and I'm I'm fine," and I have people like go sh- are in the hospital that I know. Yeah. So like, you know, it's 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 scary. You know, it's nothing to joke about. Yeah, so. well, we, ourselves here, we're we've been out of a lockdown about three weeks now. Uh, we went really? into uh, about oh, we went to level two about three weeks ago. Uh, we're probably in level one now. Uh, mm-hmm. We we were because we're like uh, you know we're a ship in the ocean compared to everybody else, yeah. right? We have the water as our border, so we're very uh, very good. We closed up our borders as quickly as we could, right. um, and so we weren't as heavily affected. And now we're basically opened up, and we're probably doing better than any other country that I can think of when it comes to that. Congratulations! Um, <laughs> that's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. But, but it's, it's similar to, I mean, um, different states in America that are, because I've got friends all over the place, yeah. uh, that some places haven't even been affected by it because, you know, they were able to um, sort, sort it out quicker. And then other places, like, you know, you look at, um, what is it, California, they didn't obey, they didn't act fast enough and they thought yeah. they had control and, and they'll. And New York is having trouble too. Place. So, yeah. Yeah, New York as yeah. well. So I think um, the quicker you act on these things, the faster it is, and then the faster you can come out of them. And yeah. that's been our situation. Uh, we acted quickly and we came out of quicker. And so hopefully, you know, that sort of, uh, we won't be affected so much. Now, um, in closing, we've got three minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, final words. I'll give you a countdown. Just give me a sec here. Final words? Are you putting me on the pressure? <laughs> I, I'm going to give you about a couple of minutes to think about it. Okay. <laughs> and while, while, yeah, while you're doing that, I am going to um, talk about where these uh, where folks can get, can have a look this um um my pet ninja and hopefully um they can check it they will check it out and enjoy it as much as i have and let me just get the go online comic so you guys to pay anything to read it um you can just um check it out and it's on risesoncomics.com just waiting for my um my um browser to upload here and let's see, here we go, online comics. And we Oh boy, you froze. This whole thing was so good and then you just froze. <laughs> As well, um, I'll get the Sorry, guys, I'm gonna get yeah. All right, so as I was saying, you can check out on uh, Ryan's own comics, you can check out my own comic book, Uncritical, but you can also check out everybody else's there. there. There's all, um, all ages um, stuff as well as mature content uh, you can um, which you can go through on drive through comics and you can get it through Kindle as well in, in digital format or you can uh, you know subscribe and might even see it at some of your stores in America um, and around the world uh, on the bookshelves in the comic shops but you can also buy it from directly from the website um, in print so I'm quite excited um, for for what's happening there and I think we're Unlike um, you know a lot of different companies, we're doing okay, but we would love to have more custom because we appreciate um, your custom and we appreciate um, comic book fans because we ourselves are comic book fans. Like, That's right, right, right. We, we we have all our products that you know. I mean, we have we buy products as well. We appreciate what's up there. You can see behind me. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. So um, if you like. Um, Different kinds of stories, uh, like we said, we got comic strips, we've got um, superhero comics, we've got uh, co- um, action comics like Corporate the Command. There's also other comics there, humor, um, all ages. Um, there's you know, su- 
various different types of stuff coming up. There's sci-fi as well. Um, so, yeah, and check it out. It's on risingcomics.com. Now, the final words. Um, hopefully you've thought, thought your words out, uh, Andrew. <laughs> well, we're going to see if they work. Let's try it. All uh, right. All I got to say is thank you for watching, everybody. Um, I enjoy my time here. This has been great. Um, yeah, and if you want to know more about My Pet Ninja, just go to the website and just read. I'm sure we're going to put more out. Uh, thanks again. And for all you other artists out there, just keep on drawing. Excellent. That's, that's been um, um, Andrew Demas. I've been Malfunction. Um, thank you for watching, guys. appreciate you tuning in and um, checking out our, broad, our live stream broadcast and if you're watching this on facebook thank you for hanging out and if you're watching this on youtube thank you uh appreciate it and if you if you like the video if you like these interviews uh please like and also subscribe and um tell your friends about it and share it the more uh, you know we, the more we can talk about the comic comics that we create the more people will um uh, you know get inspired by what we talk um you know to do their own and that's the hope hope that's my hope that you enjoy what we're doing uh and None of us basically picked up a pen when we were adults and go, yeah, we, this is what we want to do. We were inspired as children, like me back in when I was about um, 10 years old by Judge Dredd or, you know, seven, year, uh, seven eight years old by Tintin. So it's not like we just basically decided one day to do comics, but we grew up loving this medium. And here we are now doing stuff that we love uh, in the different areas that we love. Um, so thank you for watching uh, uh, watching this video, and I um, appreciate you guys hanging out. And and as Andrew said, um, check out the um, comic on risesoncomics.com. Um, the link is on here, and I'll put the link again. So Kaki Teano from New Zealand, um, see you guys again. Thanks, Andrew, for hanging out. You have a good no Sunday uh, over there in Florida, and hey. it's Monday for us now. It's uh, you what six o'clock. Yep, you're in the future. Wow, this is great. <laughs> yeah, uh, Monday at 10 o'clock, four minutes away from 10 o'clock. So thank you for hanging out, guys. Uh, we love being in the future and knowing it's a, it's a good day and nobody's, you know, everybody's fine so far. There you go. Thank good. you, guys. Um, you guys take care of your families, look after yourself, and keep safe out there. Thanks. Cheers, bud. Take care.